Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our digital living room here at AV Master. I'm Aviad Cohen, and today I have with me Nikos from Sony. Nikos yeah. is the sales manager for East Europe, including Israel. Say hi. Hi, guys. And hi, Aviad. Hi, Israel. <laughs> In the, with the cool, awesome background, we have Chris Mullins. He's the European product manager for Home Cinema. Hey, everyone. Nice to be here. Thanks, Aviad. Yeah. And we've taken a little uh, detour from our professional um, method of work. And we're going to go a little bit off-road for the fun part of home cinema. And that's why we have Chris today. So Chris, uh, you're going to take the lead for most questions. And Nikos, as being uh, the responsible adult he is, is going to wrap everything up. So... This is going to be slightly COVID related, but like also an evolution of things. Home cinema has been uh, evolving over the years. I think it has taken a giant leap in 2020, mostly stay at home. And uh, question number one, how did 2020 affect home, th home, uh, home theater uh, technologies adoption and more specific projectors? Yeah. So um, I think as, as you said in your intro, yeah, it's been quite an interesting year 2020 uh, was. It was quite a tough situation with all the, the lockdowns and the restrictions we saw everywhere. I mean, you couldn't go out, you can go to the cinema, you can go to a restaurant, uh, can go to school even, or go on holiday. So um, I think a lot of people were stuck at home wanting to be entertained. And we definitely saw at Sony, not just, not just home cinema, but the broader home entertainment kind of sector, uh, an increase in demand because of that, because people were spending the money they would have done on a holiday on, on maybe some home entertainment um, kit. And specifically for um, projectors, I think the interest in the uptake for projectors is that it's quite a, well, it's a large screen experience, you know, it's quite a social experience. And um, I think people were looking for that uh, during COVID, you know, they wanted to entertain their friends, their family, their safety bubble, you know, that um, was, put in place during that year, that time. So uh, we definitely saw an increase uh, in demand. I think we saw maybe 10, 20% increase demand over wow. the whole year. So it's quite a big, quite a big increase. Um, didn't come, it wasn't all plain sailing for Sony. It's not just, uh, it was quite a tough year. I mean, this pandemic affected supply chains, you know, there's lots of constraints. Still does, Stop by the way, still does. Still does, yeah, exactly, yeah. It's still, it's still ongoing. And uh, also tough on our dealers as well. You know, we had our dealer showrooms were closed. I mean, people, the way to see home cinema is in a room like behind me, you know, going to visit it, experience it. It's not about buying it online. You know, you want to go and feel it. Uh, and many of those were closed through 2020. So not all plain sailing, but overall, I think we managed to do uh, at Sony a really good job at fulfilling as much demand as we could. Um, and in 2020, we launched two, two brand new models. So it was quite an exciting year for actually three, three new models in 2020. That was hold quite it, exciting. hold it, hold it. This is like, you're, you're going forward with the, with the next question. Yes. Um, <laughs> we've seen some, uh, this is a recurring question, but it has different answers, you know, depending on who you ask. Um, I've seen 2020 either create new models, tweak existing models, or uh, propel and push existing models that were, you know, right on spot, right, that were spot on, just not the right time. And then the pandemic came and, oh my God, this was seen in uh, AV, especially in UC. And my question would be here, did 2020 change anything in projection uh, feature-wise or model perspective Yes, yeah. I mean, from our side, uh, for sure. I mean, Sony broadly had like uh, quite an amazing series of product launches in, in 2020. I mean, we had the PS5, we had, I mean, 8K TVs, we had new headphones, all these things still happened, even though the pandemic was happening. And um, home cinema was no different. We had those three new models uh, I mentioned. Um, and we had, uh, just to tell you the details of those, we had the VW590, which is our kind of mid-range lamp projector. Uh, a kind of successor model to the 570. We launched the VW790, which is a premium laser at 2000 lumens. And then we had a brand new flagship as well, the GTZ380, which was 10,000 lumens. And the broad overarching concept with these uh, projectors was to really improve HDR. 
You know, this is one thing where projectors traditionally have kind of struggled a little bit with HDR. You know, we don't have the same brightness as we get from a TV, you know. So how could we change projectors to give deliver a better HDR performance? So this was kind of our overall goal with the launches we started in, in 2020. Um, just, and yeah, just a sorry. small break, just because what we pride ourselves is delivering, you know, the big terms in layman's terms. When you say HDR, what does it mean for the viewer? What effect does it have? Something that he can take away from this interview and say, yeah, that one. So how would the HDR high dynamic range yeah. affect that viewer? What does he need yeah. to demand in order to feel it? Because AV is all about seeing and feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, HDR is um, uh, means a high dynamic range. So what this means is you have... Um, a, a wide, a bigger difference between the deepest dark areas of your image and the brightest white part of your image. You know, you have a much wider range of, of those dynamics, uh, but it's not just brightness. You know, uh, when, when people say, oh, I've got high dynamic range projector, it's this brightness. It's not just about brightness. It's about uh, resolution. It's about color performance and it's about this deep black level. So when we talk about delivering an HDR experience, you're really looking to combine all of those together to give you a nice, well-rounded HDR experience. And HDR is not about just those eye-popping neons or something, you know, it's about giving you a more realistic image, you know, it's like when you look outside your window, um, you see these really bright highlights and you see these nice greens, nice colors. And we're trying to replicate that as much as possible with the displays, you know, being able to see reality um, as you would see it outside. So that's what HDR delivers, it's quite a big, is a big step change from standard dynamic range that we had a few years ago. So yeah, it's it's a massive improvement image quality wise. I um, think see. I think you know at this point where you know everybody was already uh, giving their eulogies to the to the cinemas and that's dead. And I always thought, you know, I enjoy watching film films at home, but there's something about those places with big projectors so what we do over the years we take some features from that experience and we put those in home what i'm mm. asking is do you think we're at the point where you know uh, home projectors have reached that level where you say i enjoy the uh, overall ambience of cinemas but when it comes to quality I think what I have at home exceeds mm. that. Yes, um, I, I think it really, it's, it's definitely, uh, I would say um, the home cinema experience is actually exceeding what you can get in many cases um, in, in the cinema. Um, one, one example of that is just pure brightness. You're dealing with a slightly smaller screen, obviously a smaller screen than what you'd get in the cinema. So you can spec your, your projector to hit um, a brightness slightly, slightly um, higher than that, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> um, but yes, and alongside that, there's many different technologies that deliver kind of dynamic um, dynamic improvements, especially with, with contrast and with HDR. And one of the big things we launched was um, X1 for um, the X1 for projector processor with our latest with our latest projectors, you know. And this brings in a lot of our technologies that we have in our TV, you know, our picture processing at Sony is one of probably the best in class in the industry in terms of our, our display technologies. And we brought that over, optimized it for projectors and also delivered a couple of projector focused um, features as well to deliver a better HDR experience. So one of those is um, dynamic HDR enhancer. So this, this is a dynamic tone mapping um, kind of um, technology. And just to explain what dynamic tone mapping is and why it's so important, uh, <laughs> just to inform everyone, um, it's super important for projectors. As I mentioned, the brightness is not as high as you get on TVs for projectors. So when someone makes content and says, I want uh, a brightness at this really high bright point that a projector can't reach, you have to map that tone down to a level within the capability of your display, you know, within the projector display. So what we do with this, um, with this new processor is we have this dynamic HDR enhancer and it will dynamically map uh, much more accurately to the creator's intent than in the past with our projectors. 
So what that means is you have a much, um, a much closer representation of HDR from what the creator intended, you know? Um, so when you, when, you, when you watch content, you have that HDR impact of the image. The last thing we wanna do is compress everything so you don't get that HDR impact. We wanna still widen the dynamic range. Uh, and we do that by kind of three things with this process. So firstly, we have a much more powerful analysis of the HDR image. So um, we can um, finally analyze all the tonal variations in HDR, all the, all the shadow tones, all the highlight tones, much more finer than the previous generation. And then we can apply processing to that to deliver a better HDR image. So the second thing we do is look at those highlights. We look at the top end. We say, how can we boost those? How can we um, adjust the tones to be much more accurate to, um, to the creator's intent? So that's, we kind of adjust the top end with signal processing. And then the final thing we do is um, precision dimming. So with our projectors, like the 590 that has a dynamic iris that can close or the laser projectors, you can dim the light source dynamically frame, or frame by frame almost. So we actually do both things in parallel. We can precision dim, bring that black level down for HDR. And then also we can boost the highlights and get those highlights high. So the overall dynamic range is wider uh, than it was before. And it's closer to the original intent from the creator. So it's really, really exciting stuff. I mean, I've seen a fair few home cinema projectors and the step change between this generation and last generation in terms of HDR is, is really, really impressive stuff. Um, and yeah, it's, it's much closer to, to, to what the director intended, as I've mentioned several times already. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, it's always actually as a video fan, it's always interesting and fascinating to me to see how much this is evolving and constantly. I remember a conversation back in 2009 and I said, well, 1080p looks awesome. And they showed me a demo of a video conferencing unit that does 4K. And he said, how does that look? Now do you understand why you cannot settle for one thing? Uh, the only thing that baffles me right now is 8K, and I don't know when this is happening, but I am excited to see it as I've seen in IC, at IC 2020, a demo of 8K. Yeah. That was that was uh, that that blew me away. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit back to one of the questions to to further elaborate. So, because you spoke about the evolution and HDR and how you invest, and I know Sony is a very strategic company, and you follow market analysis, and you know what you're doing. The question is, do you think, or actually, let's go off data? Do you feel that 2021? is following through 2020 or is it different? Do you still um, see this the trends continuing or do they change? If they change, how so? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a difficult one. You know, it's a bit of a crystal ball thing. I mean, we're, we're halfway through 2020. So I think we can all feel that, um, yeah, this pandemic is still going. We're trying to, trying to do our best. I know in, in Israel and the UK, maybe we're a little step further than, than other countries or territories, but yeah, we are. the whole, the whole of Europe needs to, um, and the world needs to move together to get out of this, this situation. And it's gonna take some time. So I think restrictions will be in place, especially globally in some form or another. And there will be continued, I guess, home entertainment demand during those restrictions. But eventually, eventually as we get out, I, I imagine there'll be a reset to normality in terms of demand, you know, people will be able to, go outside you know I think we're all looking forward to going on holiday or eating at a restaurant or whatever the things you can't do at the moment so I think that's just fundamentally going to happen I'm sure when it when it, all those releases come it's going to come quite fast but eventually it'll reset one one thing we have done in in 2020 or 2021 sorry is actually launched two other models as well uh, we were quite um keen to, to, to unify our lineup and we actually did launch um, the VW290 and the 890. So we have like a complete unified lineup um, now. Um, and the 290 is our most affordable 4K um, projector. And this is the um, 1500 lumen entry level lamp projector. And then we also launched the, like, the other end of the spectrum, our ultra premium 
VW890 with our flagship lens, the best glass available uh, as well, 2200 lumens. So we, now we've got a complete unified lineup, 290, 590, 890, or 790, 890, and they all include this X1 for projector processor. So um, yeah, those HDR benefits I was mentioning is really available to any, any budget now. You know, if you want a certain size screen and you have a certain size budget, you can pick and choose from our lineup and get the same great HDR performance. So um, yeah, it's quite exciting from that point of view and it's a really great time in 2021 to, to invest in our home cinema. So I, not a filler question, but this one just came to mind. Mm. I noticed, uh, cause we had, uh, um, we had this uh, other interview with uh, Robert with Robert, Robert Micken, Rob, uh, he did projectors with Sony. He still is with Sony. And what he spoke of was actually having a projector in place for each grade. So for uh, uh, education, corporate, et cetera, et cetera. So this looks like strategy-wise, the same thing Sony is doing for the home entertainment uh, market. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it's important, you know. I mean, uh, to be honest, it doesn't matter how good your projector is sometimes. People only have a certain budget, you know. <laughs> you, um, people may have a, for their home cinema, a 20 grand budget, or they may have a 50 grand budget, or they may have a half a million euro budget. You know, there's different people, different slices of life. Different houses. Out there. Yeah, different houses, <laughs> exactly. Um, and that's why we have a full lineup, actually. Yeah, so from, as I said, that we even have an HD model below the 290 as well, uh, really? which is around, yeah, which is our most entry level model. But yeah, for, for the 4K lineup, we have that 290 through to 890. And then also we have our flagship model, the GTZ 380. So this is a 10,000 lumen projector. So this is really, really for those big, big rooms, those super yachts, those high net worth people. Um, but again, that really changed what is possible with home cinema. You know, with, with Sony, as you said, we are quite a strategic company. And with home cinema in particular, we were the ones who launched home cinema. You know, we did the very first projector back in 1972, I think, something like that. Um, so, and 50 years later, we're still leading that market, you know. And every, every kind of flagship model we try and do, we did the um, VW 1100 back in 2011. It was the first ever native 4K projector, you know, the best, the best image quality you could get from our home cinema. Then in 2016, we had the VW 5000, you know, the first laser native 4K 5000 lumens. So really, again, another step change in brightness, in quality. And then with the 380, we're now 10,000 lumens, twice the brightness again. Um, and we, we see with this model, it really changes what's possible with projectors on screen. You know, I was talking about that limitation of brightness with projectors. With GTZ 380, it's practically gone. You know, we can hit the same levels of brightness as your large panels can do, but on a four meter screen, you know, four or five meter screen, you can hit more than 500 nits on screen with a projector, which is unheard of. You know, that's five times what you normally get. Um, and alongside that, as I mentioned with HDR, it's not just about the brightness, it's about the resolution. So again, native 4K, again, it's high contrast with the SXRD panels, those deep blacks. But the main thing it also offers is color performance. So it, it, it hits this um, color space called um, uh, DCI-P3. So this is the color space that Hollywood used to create all their content, you know? And if you can hit 100% of that, you can replicate the exact colors as you get in the movies, you know? Um, and and that's not a hundred. That's not very rare, I would say. You do see models with that, but the rare thing with the GTZ 380 is that it does it without any brightness loss. So normally, when you when you do these advanced or wide color gamuts, you need to filter. You lose brightness. There's a compromise there. But with the GTZ 380, um, we've completely redesigned the laser light engine, introduced additional red lasers. Um, so we can cover it without any filtering. So the color volume you get with the GTZ 380 is actually probably two, three times more than what you got with our previous flagship. So the HDR experience really is like next generation stuff, you know. So again, it's top tier. It's for those people who can spend money like that. But um, it really is. It just kind of gives you, it gives people the idea of where we're going with Sony, you know. It's that high brightness. It's HDR. These technologies trickle down into the lineup. So you can see over the coming years, you'll see the direction we'll go. Um, and also the massive thing we did with this is we managed to double the brightness in the same chassis size. So we made huge improvements in cooling, 
in these patenting technologies that only only Sony can can make um, to deliver that. So it's quite it really is exciting, you know, this time um, with home cinema. You know, it's never never a better time uh, to get involved. Thank you, um, Nikos. Before you take this home. Um... I'm just trying to think this over and I look at, you know, screens are getting bigger, uh, LEDs, OLEDs, get new technologies coming out and get more screen coverage. And, you know, the brightness is the same all over. Um, it's a little rude. I have to ask, do you feel, do you see this is, you know, this age as the golden age for home theater projectors? Is it the next phase or is it, the beginning of the sunset era for projectors you know screens are getting bigger are they better you know are they the same consumers is that to me or to nikos uh, that's to you well Rico, oh, to me. Nikos Sorry. Has, okay nikos yeah, has yeah, to wrap yeah. everything Sorry. up <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. no yeah yeah um i think um yeah to be honest as i mentioned uh the even if you look back 10 years ago with projectors you know um, we are so much further along in terms of image quality brightness um, and even though screens are getting bigger i think the the average tv screen size at home is now like 65 inch or something um it's not the same as a 150 inch cinema screen you know there's still a long way to go um, and also just the pure logistics of moving something that big around, if it was a TV, would be Correct. very, very tough. So I don't think we'll ever quite get to the same image, image size you can achieve with a projector with a, with a TV. You know, it's going to take, take a bit of time. Um, but alongside that, it's not just the projector technology that's evolved in the home. You know, it's also the audio side. It's not something necessarily Sony do for, for home cinema, but you can get immersive audio at home. You've got the Atmos, you've got the DTSX, um, protocols as well gives you that full immersive 3d that is a big part of the experience and also smart home integration you know i don't think i go through a day without browsing the news and seeing some new smart home integration product you know some new amazon alexa whatever voice control fridge or, or phone or something um so that has come on leaps and bounds now you can get a home cinema set up if, if you speak to your dealer get it designed get it integrated properly it can be super simple to use, you know, some people work, uh, would be put off by it being so complicated, having 15 different remotes, you know, to use your home cinema. Agreed. Whereas now you can pretty much say, I want to watch a film and it'll go and do what you want to do, you know? So it's, um, it's quite, it's, as I said, it's, it's, it's a good time. There's lots of, lots of innovation, lots of new things coming along. And I really think it is the time to invest in 4k because, for once, there is 4K is everywhere now. You know, all content Agreed. is 4K. Agreed. All live content, movie content, gaming content, all of that stuff, you know, is, is really peaking now. And uh, it's it's a great time. Yeah. In, in, one, in one sentence, do your projectors support 4K HDR gaming? Yes, they do. Yeah, but the um, we do support it. Yeah, we have um, HDMI 2.0 ports on our projectors. So um, it supports um, 4K 60p HDR gaming, which is, um, yeah, which is great for, for all types of games. It also has a um, input lag reduction mode. So basically, you can turn that on and then you get a really lag free experience. So it's there are functions and tools within the projects to make it as optimal as possible we will correspond a little bit later about models cool <laughs> hoping i don't get i don't get kicked out of the house for all the latest purchases chris this has been amazing thank you very much for everything stay with us while nikos takes it home so uh you know there's three words i want to say and this actually characterizes the home cinema you know dream and the home cinema strategy of sony seeing is believing so this is what we say in Sony, and we've been saying that for, I don't know, how many, how many years, Chris, right? So, I mean, and, and in Sony, we have the full circle starting from, from the capturing, and that's the only vendor at the moment who has that, you know, from capturing the image with the high-end cameras, you know, in the movies that, that 
Hollywood uses to to you know to the, the production part and to scaling with their OLED screens and finally to the viewing you know with home projectors or with OLED screens. So we say seeing is believing, and we really mean that. And in fact, in Israel, we have a huge uh, 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 a network of home cinema accredited resellers, uh, which which have nine showrooms, nine 4K showrooms. And I mean, if 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 anyone goes online to our, to our website, they can just search, you know, which uh, showroom is closer to their home, and they are very well trained and very well actually educated to do a demo and finally install using the highest of technologies that Chris has said before, you know, with automation, with with nice screens. So, you know, we've done a lot of things. We've actually built a lot uh, our our uh, home cinema network. Uh, home cinema reseller network in Israel, which actually, you know, gives our, uh, you know, customers and our consumers the capability to view these very, very good, uh, you know, images that Chris has been uh, saying. So thanks a lot for this invitation, Aviad, and, it's a, and it was a very, very good privilege for us to be here and discuss about that. Guys, Chris and Nikos, thank you very much for coming into our living room. Um, we will follow up on all home technologies because they're awesome. And um, thank you. Thank you guys very, very much for your time. And I hope to see you soon for new announcements, updates, and uh, see you soon. Thanks. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Take care. Bye.